Welcome to this second in a series of five sessions titled How to Create GIS Data in CAD. In this session, we'll look at getting ArcGIS data into AutoCAD from ArcGIS Web Services. This lesson series uses ArcGIS for AutoCAD, Esri's popular free plugin to AutoCAD. ArcGIS is the system I use to access maps, data, and geographic information when I'm working in many different computing environments. I access this information using different applications running on different devices and computing platforms. The product ArcGIS for AutoCAD integrates with ArcGIS in a number of different workflow patterns, which include exchanging local files, accessing my ArcGIS server services, and also leveraging the larger ArcGIS community with its content. In the first session, I talked about building GIS data inside my AutoCAD drawings from scratch. That is a technique that I often use when I'm creating DWG files I want to share with ArcMap users. This second session will be all about web services, served out by ArcGIS Online and my own organization's ArcGIS servers. I will define the coordinate system of my drawing from web services. I will discuss the differences and reasons for adding versus extracting feature services. I will explore subtypes and domains. I will extract the schema from feature services already in my drawing and I'll demonstrate some basic feature service editing and some not so basic editing. Let's get started. Starting with an empty drawing where ArcGIS for AutoCAD is downloaded and installed, I want to add GIS information to my drawing for a new project using ArcGIS Web Services. One thing I know is that GIS data is published in different coordinate systems. I also know that in order to make different data come together correctly, I need to know where in the world I am, and so does my drawing. In ArcGIS for AutoCAD, this knowledge is established by selecting a coordinate system definition. It identifies how ArcGIS should interpret the coordinates included in my drawing, so that data coming in and out of the drawing is positioned correctly. I could select my coordinate system from a list of nominal coordinate systems that are included with the ArcGIS for AutoCAD download, or in a brand new drawing, I can connect to ArcGIS Web Services and use the coordinate system of that service as my own. This works particularly well when I know and want to use the coordinate system of the first service I'm connecting to. It is not particularly helpful if that service is published in a global coordinate system intended to cover the entire globe when I need the drawing to be in a UTM or state plane coordinate system for my project. I know the base map for my sewer system is published on ArcGIS server in the appropriate state plane coordinate system, although I can't remember exactly what it's called. I will therefore make my first order of business to connect to the map service on my server, which will both display the water system map as a dynamic raster backdrop in AutoCAD, but will also define my drawing's coordinate system. Now that I have a coordinate system defined, I can reach out to other services that may be published in different coordinate systems and they'll all line up correctly. For example, I know that the Esri World Locator service is published in a Web Mercator projection, but I can still use it to navigate within my drawing defined in state plane coordinates. I can type in my project's cross streets and my drawing will be repositioned in the correct location. I need the existing parcel boundaries here in my drawing. I know that that data is maintained in the city's GIS. I don't want all 300,000 parcels of this data set, so I will limit my extraction to my current AutoCAD view. Based on my login, I do not have permissions to edit this data, but I can still add or extract this information in a read-only fashion. The difference between adding and extracting is that adding will remember where the data has originated from, and if I want to refresh the data, I can fetch a new copy of the information from the server when I request it. If I want to create a disconnected local copy, I will extract the data. I want my own personal copy of this parcel data, so I will extract the data. I will be editing the geodatabase features of my sewer system information and need to create an editable read-write connection to that data. Even though I can already see this data depicted here in the map service, I want that data as AutoCAD vector entities here in my drawing. I will add this feature server with the edit capability enabled, since my login will allow it. If I explore this data set, I will find that the parcels have become a local ArcGIS feature class in my drawing, with all of their descriptive attributes. They are also plain AutoCAD entities. The feature classes for my sewer system are shown here as server feature classes. The parcels are categorized as local feature classes that live in my drawing. 
In the 350 version of ArcGIS for AutoCAD, subtypes are easier to work with. I noticed in the GIS Contents dialog that some of the feature classes like the sewer structures and the lateral lines are further organized by subtypes. Subtypes are handled in ArcGIS for AutoCAD in most ways like separate feature classes, but are really just different types of the same features. Additional subtype expanders in the GIS Contents dialog and pull-down menus in other user interfaces allow me to quickly navigate to the desired subtype for the data. If I select all the types, I can see all of the children as members of the parent feature class. If I select a feature class and a specific subtype, then the tools and views in the user interface focus specifically on just those subtype features. Subtype features have their own AutoCAD layer, and the AutoCAD layer is the single defining attribute that distinguishes that an entity belongs to a particular subtype. I can change the subtype of a feature either by moving the entity to its defining AutoCAD layer, or I can modify the attribute field value that controls the subtype. Changing the subtype will move the entity to the appropriate AutoCAD layer. The user interface of ArcGIS for AutoCAD 350 honors the domain constraints of ArcGIS feature services. The user interface limits my attribute value choices to only those values already approved by the GIS administrator. These are coded attribute domains or range values that are defined in the feature service. For example, I notice that the attribute fields that control the subtype is a field that has a coded value domain. I pick values from the discrete list of possible values based on their descriptive names. Feature services have either coded value domains or range domains. Coded value domains limit values to a pick list, where a range domain limits numeric values to a specific minimum and maximum value. Editing feature attributes with domain constraints based on subtypes and good default values promotes easier editing and better data quality by constraining me to choose only valid options. How do I define new domain constraints on a feature service? The answer is I don't. Like subtypes, the domain constraints on fields are from the feature service and are defined in the schema of the map being served out by ArcGIS Server. To add features to a feature service, I simply draft as I normally would using AutoCAD. I can also use the tool palette provided by ArcGIS for AutoCAD, but any AutoCAD method I want to use to put the right kind of entity on the appropriate layer will do the job. I can use any form of automation or AutoCAD commands and techniques I want to draft new features on the correct layers. Here I'll copy this entity, or use the Add Selected tool, which essentially clones the entity. Here, I'll add a feature using the tool palette. Or I could change the current layer in AutoCAD to my feature layer and use any AutoCAD command to draw an entity. I can save and reopen the drawing, even disconnect it from my network. As long as ArcGIS for AutoCAD is running, my feature service edits will be tracked. Here, I will use an Autolisp routine that places multiple features on the correct layer as I pick points on the screen. Once I'm satisfied with the changes I make, I can synchronize with the feature service. I need to have a network connection to the web service to synchronize my changes with the feature service. Entities added to the appropriate layer will be considered new. I get a report of all the changes that were detected, and I get a chance to reject or commit them. A more advanced form of editing might include feature services that are based on ArcGIS geometric networks. I can take advantage of the geodatabase rules to simplify my editing tasks in AutoCAD. For example, here my sewer network includes a rule that whenever a 6-inch lateral line is added somewhere along a sewer gravity main, a vertex should be added to the main line, a tap feature should be added at that point, and a customer service feature should be added at the free end of the lateral. When the new line is added to the main line, the main line is modified, the lateral is added, and the two appropriate sewer junctions are added. I perform some basic editing and some more sophisticated editing here. Both were straightforward in AutoCAD, but in the case of the geometric network, it's good to be aware that there could be rules defined in the geodatabase that do additional work, something that I can take advantage of. Look for training sessions to come in the near future that will focus on editing in ArcGIS for AutoCAD 350. What if I want my own local copy of the data to be structured just like the data stored in the GIS? What if I just want your schema to build my data? 
I want to use the same feature class names and field names as existing data, but I will be building my own version of it in my geographic location. I want to use the structure of the data in the published feature service as the schema for my current project. Even with read-only access, I can use this schema for my local data within my drawing. I can make a connection to the service and then use the Extract option. I can choose an area where I know there will be no features to find in the database. In this case, I don't want any features, just their schema. There are two different ways to extract feature services as local feature classes. I can extract feature classes from feature services already in my drawing from the GIS Contents window or from the Add Services dialog like I performed previously. When I select them in the GIS Contents pane, all of the entities remain but are demoted to a local feature class. If I delete the entities, the schema remains, including any domains or subtypes. I will present another session on creating and using template files in this series, but know that at any time, I can simply erase all of the entities I have in the drawing, and the feature classes and attribute field definitions will remain. If I save that drawing, I will have effectively saved the schema. If I save that drawing as an AutoCAD DWT template file, then I have created a template file that contains my schema. Let's review the session on creating ArcGIS data from a feature service. Connecting to an ArcGIS web service in a new drawing adds the coordinate system of that service to my drawing. I can use the first service I connect to as a way to define my coordinate system in a new drawing. I use the Add option for feature services if I want to edit the feature services on the server, and I use the Extract option when I want a local copy of the data. Subtypes and domains are included in feature services when I add or extract. If I want local feature classes to have subtypes and domains, the only way to do that in the ArcGIS for AutoCAD 350 release is to get them from a feature service. I performed some basic feature service editing and modified my water system DO database using ArcGIS for AutoCAD. All of the schema was already defined for me and I just used it. When I want to build my own data, but using the same schema as a published feature service, I can harvest the schema from the service by extracting a blank feature class and then reuse just the schema. In the third session in this series, I will focus on using ArcGIS Desktop to generate ArcGIS data inside AutoCAD files and working with that exported data in ArcGIS for AutoCAD. I would encourage you to take advantage of all five sessions in this series.